Warning, pest control video ahead. Please do not watch if you may be offended. You can watch anyway, but... Hey guys, it's Robin here from Team Fox, and today I introduce the video once again from the woods. And in this episode, we're going to be shooting the squirrel feeder. I've had to come down here again to top the feeder up, and I'm having to come down now every couple of days, uh, so they are really um, on the nuts. The weather's turned, it's bitterly cold, um, and it's concentrating the squirrels on the feeder. I don't know how many we've got left. I shot five here just a few weeks ago, um, and better continue to feed the feeder uh, for two reasons, really. One, for the wild birds, because I don't mind feeding those. They need a helping hand at the this time of year uh, but to also get on top of the grey squirrels that we've got on the area the golf course behind me here the greenkeeper tells me uh, he reckons there's upwards of 50 squirrels in this area so what I'm trying to do is concentrate them in one area uh, to humanely thin those numbers down uh, considerably what I've got just behind us here is a hide that I've had to construct uh, over a couple of evenings with the help of uh, my little fox a friend uh, because I don't have time in the daytime. It's been extremely busy at work and so on and so forth. I've got a real busy weekend ahead of me. Tomorrow I'm actually going to North Yorkshire uh, for a shoot uh, from an invite from Chris once again. So thank you very much. And I'm really looking forward to that. Although the weather um, gives it as being bitterly cold and actually forecast some snow, believe it or not. Then on Sunday morning, hopefully, um, the weather looks good enough for me to be able to come and shoot the squirrel feeder. So fingers crossed that I managed to get something uh, strung together for you guys. So sit back, relax, enjoy the squirrel shooting video take care stay safe and as always happy shooting Once again, the Air Arms S510 Hawk Scope combination performs flawlessly in this environment. And it's a real versatile tool. It's fast becoming one of my favorite tools, this. Um, you know, you can use it indoors, dial it down for, for ratting. I've not got it dialed up um, a great deal at the moment. You know, I've predetermined the distance. It's only 18 paces. You just simply don't need a lot of power. Yet, when you go out on the rabbits, you know, and you want to take them at 50, 60 yards, you dial that power right up, um, you know, to 33 foot pounds, and you can wallop rabbits all day long at those distances. singing. I love this kind of shooting.
just making sure that the magnification and everything's all in check. I did actually get out a couple of evenings previous to this session uh, under torchlight to put a few rounds down at the determined range just to make sure I could be absolutely positive uh, of decent headshots before today's session. And I didn't have to wait long before the first customer arrived. It was out fairly early after a decent feed, I think. The trouble was, it was actually out before I'd had a chance to probe home the first pellet, so you can hear me clicking and clinking around in the background there, trying to uh, quietly um, load the magazine, and this one sort of went away for a few minutes before it uh, eventually came back. This time I was ready for the shot, so I got myself comfortable, waited for the squirrel to settle with a nut in mouth, and sent this one cartwheeling off of the feeder. I didn't have to wait long before squirrel number two made his way in from the same location. Now once they've got a nut and they settle to feed, that's an ideal time to take your shot. However, I can't take this one here because his head is directly in front of the glass jar that holds the peanuts. So I need to just bide my time and wait for him to just move um, to either the left or the right and then I can thread home the pellet. I'm confident of the shot but I also know that it's going to go straight through the head uh, and again I don't want to shatter my, uh, my jar. And that'll do very nicely, thank you very much. Now if you watch this clip closely, I'm just going to control my breathing and gently squeeze the trigger, but you'll actually see the pellet go straight through and rebound off and it leaves a mark on the backboard there behind it, which was probably a centimetre or two to the left, so that's exactly why I couldn't take that shot any earlier than that. Well, that's a bit of a result. We didn't have to wait too long between the first and the second squirrel. That second squirrel though seemed quite a bit younger and it seemed very wary of the adult squirrel that was on the floor. I don't know, maybe it was a parent. Uh, but it certainly looks like the new hide is doing well so far. They don't seem to know I'm here uh, and it seems to be fairly well camouflaged. And again there's a bit of ambient noise. As you can hear we've got the road in the background and the golf course just behind the feeder. We're about 25 minutes into this session. I'm going to give it another couple of hours. Um, I did shoot five here a few weeks ago, but I've been feeding it up and the feed's been going down quite considerably. What is quite nice to see is the plethora of wild birds coming to the feeder. So it's giving them a real helping hand. Um, now it's got quite cold. Right, let's continue. We'll see you in a little while. What was quite surprising to see that morning is just how much time the squirrels actually spend on the floor rooting around in the leaf litter and stuff, but those branches that I conveniently lent up the tree made for some decent and quick roots uh, straight towards the feeder. I thought that one had gone straight up the tree, but you can just see them there in the V there, and I was going to take it um, just about now, and then uh, all of a sudden he changed his mind and came down towards the feeder, so I'm glad that I waited uh, a little while to take this shot.
Now, as this one settles yet again, he has his head in an awkward place, but what it has taught me is that I probably need to rethink the design of my feeder for next time, or certainly for later in the year. Um, so I'm going to have to wait once again for this one to move to the left or to the right before I can thread home the pellet. And this one duly obliges, takes a peanut and sits on the back bench there, giving me a uh, perfect opportunity to take a decent headshot. And there you go, that was a decent headshot, straight between the eyes. I've slowed this next clip down so you can see just, um, you will see it actually parting the hair um, on the head of this squirrel here. Right, so if you look in between the left and right eye there, you'll see a pellet comes in, whack, straight in the middle, and it is lights out for that squirrel. Now after hearing a rustling right next to the hide, this squirrel actually made his way right past my location and I think that goes to show the benefit of having a permanent hide set up in your shoot location that you can just walk into and start shooting from straight away. Naturally they're there feeding away all of the time and they get used to it um, and again if you keep nice and still and quiet there's no reason why you can't just sit a few yards away and make accurate shots like this. A little bit of nerves and thrashing around on the floor there was enough to draw the attention of a neighbouring squirrel in the area who came trotting past the hide to see what all the commotion was about. As my attention was drawn to the squirrel on the floor that just moved out of sight picture to the right, another squirrel came down the tree to have a chew on my nuts. Now that the weather's turned cold, it's really starting to draw them in. As another one falls, this is turning into be a really productive morning so far. Now this next squirrel really tested my patience. I had to wait a fair amount of time for him to actually make his way up to the feeder so I've fast forwarded this frame because it was several minutes long in the end but he was clearly agitated by the ever increasing body count on the floor before he finally settled on the feeder and I was able to get a shot off.
just had number six and number seven. That was for you, Chris and Andy. I had a cracking day's um, shooting in North Yorkshire yesterday with those guys. Thank you very much for that invite. Um, yep, yeah, so those two were for you too. Thank you. There's been a bit of a lull in the action, so I'm going to crack open my flask and have a couple of chockies. Why not? It's nearly Christmas. A big benefit to having pallets as your hide is you've got some ready-made shelves pretty much at the perfect height for you, all your stuff that you want to keep in there like your glasses case and your phone and your, your tea obviously. And another one bites the dust. And the blue tit says, if you don't want that nut, I'll have it. Well, it's gone quiet again. But I think, if my counting is correct, I think we're up to nine. I really want to get to double digits. It'll be the best ever morning squirrel shoot I've ever had. But I'm on a time limit. I've only got till midday because the good lady fox wishes to go shopping. Bloody hate shopping. Anyway, I'm going to stick it out, enjoy my brew, and see if we can get the number 10. I have seen one behind me. There's only a young one, but I'm hoping it makes its way around the wood to the feeder. Every one I've had so far, every one, bar one of them has been on the feeder, and some of them I've had to wait until they turn away because the, the jar that holds the peanuts is actually made of glass, and I don't want to shatter it. So I'm going to sit tight and wait for my alarm to go off because I don't want to get a bollock in. Right, fingers crossed we can get to the, the number 10.
like worst days. Well, there we are. That brings this session to a conclusion. It's been a fantastic morning here in the woods and we did end up with nine. Frustrating not to get that 10th one, but there we go. That's the way it is. It's still a record for me. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care, stay safe, and as always, happy shooting. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and you like what you see, please consider subscribing and give it a thumbs up. You can follow the instant action on Instagram, team underscore foxer, and you can also get in contact with me via the email on screen.